We know him as the Lycian warlord that fought in the Trojan War, a great hero that battled against the Achaeans and defended the city of Ilion until his inevitable demise. But who was really Sarpedon, and what's the story behind this legendary ruler? In this episode, we will talk about the famed king of Lycia, from his origins and connections to Crete, through his life and reign, and the ultimate fate that was waiting for him at Troy. There are several different versions of the origins and genealogy of King Sarpedon, tying him to both the island of Crete and his native land of Lycia. According to Homer, Sarpedon was a son of Zeus and the Lycian princess Laodamia. Other sources, such as Hesiod and Bacchylides, assign Sarpedon a Cretan origin mentioning him as a son of Zeus and Europa, and a brother of Minos and Romadantes, who themselves were said to have lived several generations before the Trojan War. In a third, and likely the most plausible version, there were two related individuals named Sarpedon. Sarpedon the Elder was a Cretan prince, a brother of King Minos and Prince Romadantes. After the death of previous king Asterion, the brothers battled for the throne in Knossos, with Minos ultimately prevailing. As a result, Sarpedon, together with his supporters, which were called the Termili, was forced to leave the island and settle to another land. As the Termili arrived to Lycia, they mixed with a native tribe called the Solimoi, the predecessors of the Lycian tribe of Milii. As the Termili brought the Cretan customs with them, the land of Lycia ultimately emerged with a distinct cultural trait, such as their lineage which they traced exclusively through the female line. The elder Sarpedon, therefore, became the Lycian ruler establishing his realm in the valley of River Xanthos, where he was succeeded by his son Evandros, also known as Evander. Evander in turn married Laodamia, and a couple had a son they named Sarpedon after his grandfather. As the younger Sarpedon succeeded his father, he quickly established himself as a steadfast ruler, one of his chief allies was his cousin, Prince Glaucus, a renowned warrior and one of the leading figures in the Lycian army. Sarpedon himself would soon prove his worth on the battlefield, running successful campaigns against the neighboring tribes and ultimately becoming the most powerful king in Lycia. It is unknown whether or not Lycia was an actual unified kingdom under Sarpedon, as Homer simply describes his realm as River Xanthos, but it is clear that King Sarpedon was the most prominent ruler, not only in Lycia, but the surrounding lands as well, and represented one of the most important Trojan allies. The Trojans themselves, under King Priam, having secured many alliances, stood as a wealthy and powerful city with seemingly no threat that could endanger the might of Ilion. However, as the Trojans sent out a diplomatic mission to Sparta, the Trojan prince Paris returned home, 
not with a secured alliance, but with Queen Helen of Sparta, which he abducted and brought to Ilion with him. These actions would come with a heavy price, as the Spartan ruler Menelaus was the brother of Agamemnon, the king of Mycenae and the most powerful ruler in all of Greece. The Achaeans rounded up a coalition under King Agamemnon, numbering over 1,000 ships, and declared war on Troy. The Trojans in turn prepared for war themselves and rallied their own allies, and soon enough a request for help was sent out to King Sarpedon in Lycia. While Sarpedon himself was not enemy with the Achaeans, he ultimately decided to honor his alliance with the Trojans and the Lycian army began preparations for the upcoming Trojan War. The Lycian battle contingent was led by King Sarpedon himself, with Prince Glaucus as his right hand and the captain of the army. As the Trojan War dragged on, neither side was able to achieve a decisive victory. In the final year of the war, the internal struggle emerged within the Achaean ranks, as Achilles refused to fight any further after his concubine and war prize, Breezes, was taken by Agamemnon. King Agamemnon then marched to the field without his greatest champion, and after having initial success against the Trojan army, decided it was the time for the decisive battle. The Trojans, however, came more than prepared, with a force strengthened by their Phrygian, Mycenaean, and Lycian allies. In this battle, King Sarpedon proved his warrior reputation on the field as the Rhodian leader Tlepomeus and an Achaean hero Alcmaeon were both slain by the spear of the Lycian king. At this point, Sarpedon felt that all of the heavy fighting was done by the Trojan allies and not the Trojans themselves, and he went on to criticize the Trojan prince and leader Hector who in turn stepped up himself and started cutting through the enemy ranks. As Hector's own contingent advanced against the Achaean formation, Agamemnon was ultimately forced to withdraw his forces inside the Achaean camp. The Trojan contingents, however, did not stop there, but followed the enemy and eventually broke into the camp themselves, causing widespread panic and confusion among the Greek forces. The total disarray among the Achaeans only stopped when Patroclus, dressed in Achilles' helmet and armor, rallied his compatriots into a counterattack, forcing most of the Trojans and their allies to flee away. Among the rare warriors that stood firm was none other than King Sarpedon, who unmounted from his chariot and decided to face the advancing hero himself. Shame on you, Lycians! Where are you running? Now is the time for you to fight on bravely. I'll stand up to this man and I'll find out who it is that fights so well who brings with him so much destruction for the Trojans, breaking the limbs of many fearless soldiers. As King Sarpedon engaged in battle against Patroclus, the Olympian gods were watching, weighing in on the ill fate of the Lycian king. Ultimately, convinced by his wife Hera, Zeus himself decided against saving the king of Lycia and it was Patroclus who emerged victorious. Homer records Sarpedon's last words, calling for his captain Glaucus to continue fighting. Glaucus, my friend, you warrior among men, now you must really show yourself a spearman, a true courageous fighter. You must now embrace this evil war if you're brave enough. 
first move around and urge the Lycian leaders to make a stand here by myself. And then you fight over me in person with your bronze. I will be source of misery and shame for all of your days to come if Achaeans strip my armor now that I am down. So hold your ground with force, spar on the army. Ultimately, both his friend Glaucus and enemy Patroclus would be among the fallen, together with Achilles, Hector and countless other warriors and princes on both sides. King Agamemnon would have his victory, with the city of Troy destroyed, and Spartan Queen Helen returned to King Menelaus. Sarpedon was buried in his native Lycia with all the royal funerary honors. His legend would continue to live on and develop in the following centuries, not only in his native land, but throughout the Hellenic world. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video, as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico, Panayotis Yanopoulos, Fred Lecky and Estate Care for their continuous support. If you wish to become a Patreon member, please click the link in the video description. This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.